Welcome to the Form Two Science Lecture, Chapter Eight, Section One: Making Electricity Flow. Many appliances we use every day require electricity to work. For example, mobile phone, washing machine, and laptop computer. When doing experiments on electricity, we often make use of a circuit board kit. For example, circuit board and dry cell connectors, bulb, wire, and switch. You should work hard on their spellings because they always appear in this chapter. In this slide, we have three circuit: circuit A, B, and C. The bulb only lights up in circuit A. The bulb in circuit B and C do not light up. So, what are the conditions for making the bulb light up? You can pause. The video, and try to find the differences between circuit A, B, and C. For electricity to flow through an electrical appliance, there must be a source of electrical energy. For example, dry cells. And power stations provide us with electrical energy through main circuit. The main circuits can be usually found in your home. And other conditions for electricity to flow through an electrical appliance is a complete circuit. Once the circuit is completed, and the bulb lights up, we call it closed circuit. On the other hand. The circuit is not completed, and the bulb does not light up. We call it open circuit. Here is the summary: For electricity to flow through an electrical appliance, there must be a source of electrical energy and a closed circuit. Try to make some drawings on your notes to help you remember the key points. In a summary, more easily. Let's move on. In this part, we will learn more about electrical conductors and insulators, materials that allow electricity to pass through, are called electrical conductors. For example, a metal wire conducts electricity. Materials that do not allow electricity to pass through are called electrical insulators. For example, a rubber band does not conduct electricity. Here is our three main points. Number one, materials that allow electricity to pass through are called electrical conductors. For material that do not allow electricity to pass through, are called electrical insulators. Metals are electrical conductors, while most non-metals are electrical insulators. In here, we say most non-metal are electrical insulators. That means there are some non-metals. Are electrical conductors. Let's move on to the last part of these sections. Switches. We will do an experience later to find out that. What is the differences between these four switches? First, let me introduce how a switch works. When a switch is closed, the two conducting 
parts touch each other, and the circuit becomes closed. Here is the conducting parts. When the switch is closed, electricity can flow through the circuit. This is the end of chapter X, section one. Hope you guys enjoy it. Try to make some drawings on your notes and refill this lecture when you have time. Please work hard, and I hope to see you guys soon.